All right, family, we're back right here on the Tariq Elite Radio Show. I am your gracious host. My name is Mr. Tariq Elite Nasheed. And as I stated earlier, I am broadcasting live from Honolulu, Hawaii, Waikiki in particular, as you hear, there's sirens and stuff going on in the background. So you guys might hear some background noises. I'm sitting staring at the beach as we speak. I might let y'all get a little sound of the sea breeze going on. But it's, I'm here. I'm doing the show a day late. I had some stuff to do. I was running around out here in Honolulu. The time difference is like two hours behind Los Angeles time, five hours behind East Coast time. So out here, it's hella early. But back in the States, it's hella late. So the time gets off a little bit. But I'm here. I'm here and I'm ready to chop it up and make it do what it do. Um, don't forget, if you have not, get Hidden Colors 1, 2, and 3 at HiddenColorsFilm.com, ladies and gentlemen. Now, speaking of Hidden Colors, y'all know that you know Hidden Colors is the most successful black history documentary series ever. It has outsold all other history documentaries about black life, black culture, African culture, whatever you want to call it. And the Hidden Colors series, it it was very successful. And let me not say was, it is very successful on a grassroots level. And it being so successful on a grassroots level, meaning we didn't have any mainstream support or mainstream help making this project a success and when you have things like that when you have grassroots projects doing the kind of numbers it's hidden colors you know corporate America they look at it they see this they watch this y'all remember a few years ago there was a case a situation I had with Nike Nike put out a series of t-shirts called I think it was called hidden images See, they were using the word hidden now. They're using plays on the word hidden. They had hidden images. There was some type of LeBron James shirts from what I remember, but the shirts looked just like the Hidden Colors DVD cover. You guys can look this up, by the way. And, you know, there was some legal stuff we were going to look into. But, you know, they knew how to get around little legal loopholes and all that stuff. So corporate, they watch what you do. When I did my books, when I first did my books, like The Art of Mackin and all that, those books were put out on an independent um, publishing company. It was a publishing company out of Chicago that was independent, and they put my books out. Well, they put The Art of Mackin out. And that sold a lot on a grassroots level. That My first book became very successful on a grassroots level. And again, corporate, they watch this stuff. They see what's going on. And a lot of the major publishers started putting out books with the Mac title in it. There was a book that came out with one of the major publishers called Mac Tactics, The Art of Attracting Women. So they used the word Mac and they threw the word art in there. So now when people search for Art of Mackin, their books will come up. So these people at corporate, they're very slick at the way they do things. And when something is successful that black people put together, the white supremacists, they know how to co-opt the hell out of it. And that tradition still goes on. Right now, As we know, everybody's talking about Hidden Colors coming out, Hidden Colors 4, and that's going to be out in a few months. People keep hitting me up about Hidden Colors 4. We're working on it, family. We're working hard on it. It's going to be out in a few months. I promise you. Now, everybody's buzzing about Hidden Colors. And it's Black History Month, by the way, so a lot of people are talking about Black History Month and Hidden Colors and all that good stuff. Do y'all know that Fox Films They are about to put out a film about African-American women in space flight, um, black female astronauts, and some type of movie they're putting together now based on a book by this 
some people say that she's like a black feminist, but you have to understand many of these black feminists are funded by the white supremacists, these pretend black feminists, because most of them are not even feminists. And I, I don't know too much about the sister who wrote the book, but from what I understand, the sister wrote a book. It was put out by the major publishers and the book got optioned for a film. And the film is coming out about the history of these black female astronauts or the first black females in space or something like that. Females in aviation. It's something along those lines. And guess what the name of the film is? The name of the film is called Hidden Figures. You see that? Ain't that some slick shit right there? Y'all Google that. And I think we, we put up a, a story about it on MelanoidNation.org. They got a, a history film about black women in aviation called Hidden Figures. So that just shows you how these people are trying to use play on words to piggyback and capitalize off the things that we make successful. And that's just another white supremacist tactic, family. This is why it's so important that we have to start owning and controlling our own entities. And we need a network of people owning and controlling. That's the thing. We need a whole network. Because when there's few of us out there doing our thing, the white supremacists, they'll go and try to co-opt that shit every single time. It's not a coincidence they're doing a black history film called Some Damn Hidden Figures. All right? They understand the impact and the reach of the Hidden Color series. And I say that very humbly. I'm not trying to give me or the film undue credit. The film series has really influenced a lot of popular culture worldwide. And these white supremacists are going to take advantage of that. So y'all just watch the game and peep the game. I think they're trying to get Taraji P. Henson in this movie. Octavia Spencer, the, the woman who was in The Help. So y'all watch this. Because, see, the thing is, when they see something is hot, and that's why I, I made the film series extremely black. Because what they'll do, they'll get the same theory or use the same words and then war it, water it down. And then take the emphasis off race and then make it about, well, it's just black women struggling as black women. See? And it's not a coincidence that this there's a so-called black feminist who wrote the book who was funded by the major corporations, it's not a coincidence that they tried to get them out there, the black so-called pretend feminists, to start talking about black issues and then all of a sudden it becomes about gender. So they're good at co-opting stuff and then trying to promote their heroes over people in the grassroots area. Just like with this D-Ray Macklison dude, I saw another article, I think by The Root, another one of these white-owned corporations that has a little negro section and they are they are doing their damnedest to try to make this dude into martin luther king they keep showing pictures of him comparing him to martin luther king and that netta chick who y'all know i have a beef with i had a beef with they try to compare her to rosa parks so whenever you have the white supremacists just crowbarring people in your face telling you hey this guy right here is the next martin luther king hey this girl right here is the next rosa parks that's a red flag right there if they're telling you who the heroes should be and who you should follow, that is always a red flag. So this is why we got to keep that grassroots hustling going heavy. And that's why we got a new social networking app coming out. The name of the app is going to be called More Us. M-O-O-R-U-S. Today, family, we just started the Indiegogo page for the More Us app. The app is in development right now. You can go check out the, the, the lander site at moreus.com. M-O-O-R-U-S dot com. That's the landing site. But it's going to be an app. It's going to be centered around black empowerment. This is the first app that's going to be centered around black empowerment. Now, 
everybody can come on there. That's fine. We're not discriminating against anybody. But the central theme ultimately will be about what can black people do to empower themselves. If you want to post pictures, that's fine. But ultimately, is posting this type of picture, whatever picture you're posting, is that going to contribute to the ultimate empowering of us? See, that we got to have a mission statement for some of these things we do. A lot of times we don't have a general theme or mission when black folks get together because that's another thing. People always talk about, well, black folks, we need to get together. But get together and do what? Nobody ever says what the hell to do when you get together. So when we get together, a bunch of ratchet shit pops off because there's no agenda. So now we have an agenda that will leverage and center everything. So if people want to post up whatever, that's fine. But you understand that we're centered by the mission of empowerment. And and, and again, it's not a triple darkness hotep site where everybody's going to be wearing kente cloths and onks. No, you just be yourself. That's the general theme of the site. Free yourself, be yourself. Be whatever you want to be. If you ratchet, that's fine, but be ratchet and be about empowerment. Don't be ratchet to the point where you're disempowering everybody. So this is the first app of its kind. We're going to have to start getting off the Facebooks and the Twitters and all that old stuff. Because Facebook, they have a very, very long history of banning black folks who talk about empowerment. That's why we got to get our own shit. They, they let these white supremacists run amok on Facebook, but they ban black folks for every little infraction. And some of the stuff they're banning black people for is ridiculous. That means it's time to bounce. People, we, they, people start talking about, well, we need to boycott this, boycott that. But no, we got to replace stuff that you boycott. People talk about boycotting, but you have to replace it with something. And this is what we're going to replace it with. We're going to have our own joint. Because black folks, we make these social networking sites hot anyway. We we literally make social networking hot as black people. Just like Black Planet was one of the first social networking sites online. It was one of the first. And it was one of the first popular ones. Black people made it popular. Black people showed people how to get down with the social networking game because we're very innovative as far as socializing. So we have to learn how to own and control the things that we make hot. That's very important. So family, if you're listening, all I got thousands of listeners. Everybody should go to Indiegogo.com or go to moreus.com where you can get linked to the Indiegogo page and support and contribute to the More Us app because this is something that we need, not something that we want. We need this. This is going to be like a daily extension of the Hidden Colors franchise. So now we can socialize every day and we can control the um, arena in which we socialize without getting censored or banned. That's very important. But I digress, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of stuff going on. Speaking of boycotting, you know, there was supposed to be this boycott of Beyonce. I think they tried to boycott her in front of the the NFL building in New York, something like that, but it was a low turnout. But there's a backlash. A lot of people in law enforcement are kicking out this backlash against Beyonce. From what I understand, down in Florida, she's doing a concert there, and I think cops refused to do security for the venue. And that's another thing. Let me say this, man. When it comes to campaigning, for certain things and when it comes to dealing with this politi- these politicians one thing that we have to do there's a whole list of things that we need to present and I talk about this a lot this is why I had the don't vote campaign and I still have it and when I mean don't vote don't vote for the Republicans or Democrats if they're not going to do anything don't vote for a presidential candidate who's simply not going to do shit Black people, we vote out of fear. The only reason we want to vote for Bernie Sanders or Hillary Clinton is because of we're, we're scared of Donald Trump. And I keep asking black people, what the hell is Donald Trump going to do that Obama hasn't done in the last eight years? We've been literally terrorized in the last eight years. How much worse is Donald Trump going to be? I really want to know this. But the thing is, one thing that we have to get on the table, 
these police unions are going to have to be busted up. There is no practical purpose for a damn police union other than to protect race soldiers. That's all these police unions are for. That's literally what the modern police unions, that's why they got started. After the 60s, after the riots and all this stuff, when when a lot of cops started to get sued for police brutality in the 60s because they started to because of the Jim Crow laws had to go underground they started to implement police to control the black communities because the general public you couldn't just go lynch black people like you used to back before the 60s if a black person got out of line you just couldn't go get a rope and hang them you know it, it you couldn't do that no more so then they just got the police to do all the dirty work but a lot of cops started to get sued. So the police unions were formed to protect these race soldiers who were working in law enforcement. And that's all they do. The, the police unions operate like a, a crime family. They have to be busted up. These police unions, they need to be dismantled. And that's one thing that we should demand. All this police reform and training cops. Fuck that. If any politician talks about how they're going to do police, how they're going to police reform and cha train the cops to not beat you, that's a con game. They're, they're basically giving more money to the cops and giving more money to the unions. That's a con game. And also get them to give resources and allocate resources to black society. Any politician who's not talking about that, just don't vote for them. Just like with Bernie Sanders. Black people are still caping for Bernie Sanders. And I'm going to get to the Beyonce thing in a minute, by the way. And let me let me touch on that. With Beyonce, again, like I said, they're trying to ban her. What I say is that Beyonce and Jay-Z, they, the, the, they need to get the fruit of Islam to do security for them. That's what they need to do. They need to do the fruit of Islam. They need to get them to do security for them. Because that's what our brother Johnny Cochran had to do. I'm going to talk about that whole OJ miniseries that's on the FX, FX network. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But during that OJ trial back in the 90s, I remember it like it was yesterday. The person who got the most death threats was not OJ Simpson. OJ Simpson did not get the most death threats. The person who got the most death threats was Johnny Cochran the brilliant black lawyer who was running circles around the prosecution. This brother was making these suspected white supremacists look bad. And they were trying to kill Johnny Cochran. So Johnny Cochran started showing up to court with the Nation of Islam. That really pissed the white supremacists off. They were so mad at Johnny. That's why his death has always seemed real funny style to me. Johnny Cochran's death has always seemed real, real funny style to me. But, but I, I'm not trying to sound like a conspiracy theorist. But the thing is with that whole OJ thing that's on, you know, it's very popular right now. The series is on. And the reason why this series is on, and when you look at it, they're definitely pro-prosecution. They, they're really, they keep implying that OJ really did it. And they keep saying little slick stuff. There was a scene, Cuba Gooden Jr. is playing OJ. There was a scene where OJ was like, I don't want to make this about race. I ain't black. I'm OJ. Now, I don't believe OJ said no shit like that. I'm not saying that OJ wasn't on the soft shoe coon train because he was one of those niggas who thought that, you know, he was special and, you know, he could do no wrong in the, the eyes of white society. But I, I still don't think that this dude was, is a killer. I honestly don't think that. And with this series, they keep implying that OJ's attorneys were devious and slick and they were coming up with all types of tricks and you have to understand how white supremacists think. White supremacists when they take an L they're the opposite of us. See when black people get a little symbolic victory we spend 50 years celebrating that symbolic victory. The white supremacists don't do that. When the white supremacists when they take an L They'll spend the next 20 years figuring out everything they went wrong in taking that L. Because when it comes to dealing with the Negroes, white supremacy is not supposed to lose. And with that OJ case, that was a major blow to white supremacy because now you have a case of a black man 
who was accused of killing two white people and he ended up getting a fair trial. That was the problem. Black people are not supposed to get fair trials. The, the, the game is supposed to always be rigged against black people. That's the only, with OJ, he got a fair trial. He had a jury of his peers. He had the, the resources to get lawyers and he won that case. Now they got, they, they got him anyway. The white supremacists, again, they manipulated the law and they put the man in jail over some bullshit. They were trying to set him up. They set him up eventually put him in jail for stealing his own stuff. You know, which basically proved everything Johnny Cochran said was that the judicial system was racist and it's full of flaws that disenfranchises black people. And that's exactly what they did. So they proved him right. But the first case, they still want to figure out what they did wrong. And one thing they did wrong was letting all those black people on a jury and they fixed that. That's why jury nullification, they get all these suspected white supremacists on these juries and they go along with the narrative that will empower white supremacy. So that's one thing. They had to get all these black people off these juries. The next thing they had to rectify, they do not allow people to bring race into the courtroom anymore. See, that was the last major case where race was a factor. That's why whenever black people today, whenever we get killed by these race soldiers, the white supremacists, they will make sure the family gets on TV and the first thing out of their mouths is, well, I don't really think this was about race. I just want to say that my son getting shot in the back 12 times did not have anything to do with race. They make you say that. And that's part of the white supremacist code. They make sure that they don't say all that white supremacist gibberish so that it won't go back and, and bite them in the ass. And that's what happened with, with the OJ case. They had a straight up white supremacist named Mark Furman, who was the guy who found everything, which I think Mark Furman might have planted some stuff. This guy hated black people. Mark Furman, and, and, and they, they really try to minimize Mark Furman. See, when you deal with a white supremacist, they're capable of anything. Look at all these cases now with these white supremacist race soldiers killing black people and then lying about it and then covering shit up. So it's not far fetched to believe that they did the same thing with the OJ trial. And I'm from L.A. I know how scandalous they are. The cops will plant evidence on you at the drop of a damn hat. We knew that in L.A. So when they had Mark Furman up there and there was evidence that there was some shit that might have been planted, we weren't we were like, oh, OK, this is just them doing the regular shit. It is not not far fetched to believe that they plant evidence because they do it in L.A. Or, and they did it in L.A. all the time. The early LAPD around the late 80s, early 90s, they were real scandalous, man. All my L.A. people know how it was under Chief Daryl Gates, under his watch in L.A. He was scandalous. They were scandalous as hell. So we weren't it wasn't a far fetched thing to believe that they would do something slick. And, and this Mark Furman guy, this guy literally had fantasies about killing black people. He said it. See, that's what helped them lose the case, the prosecution, because Mark Furman, they found some some tapes of him just going on and on about how he want to kill black people. And he sued the LAPD because he said they made him a racist because he had to deal in the gang units and all that old shit. So this dude despised black people. He fantasized about killing black people. So it's not a stretch of the imagination to believe that this dude would plant some evidence on a black person. So people were correct in saying that there was reasonable doubt in that case. But again, with the white supremacists, it's all about figuring out how can we not let this happen again? So that's what they're doing with this case. They're giving out codes in that this movie in this movie what they're doing they're giving the white supremacists little subliminal codes to go by so if ever there's a case like this again or you want to deal with black people again this is the words you use this is what you allow this is what you don't allow so that you won't get these same results because that's how white supremacy operates they work in code they're real big on code see black people we don't understand code see people talk in codes with us and we 
We believe every goddamn thing they say. Just like with Bernie Sanders. Let me go back to Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders hasn't promised to do a damn thing for black folks. And there are people still caping for Bernie Sanders as if he's some type of great alternative to Hillary Clinton or even Trump. Bernie Sanders goes around with a bunch of civil rights Negroes talking about how he marched with King and all this old stuff, but he ain't promising black folks nothing. And then when he makes a promise, it's some old vague shit that ain't got nothing to do with us specifically. It's some, well, I'm going to help poor people and there's a lot of black people who are poor, so you'll get help too. That's that, well, if I eat and feed everybody else, there's some crumbs for you. And we don't ever even get those crumbs. When people try to lock him down on, hey, Bernie Sanders, what are you going to do specifically for black people? Oh, well, no reparations or nothing like that. That's that's divisive. And I want somebody to ask him, was it divisive for the U.S. government to give reparations to Jewish people for the Holocaust? Anybody who sees him, please ask him that. Y'all got to know how to ask these people the right questions, man. There was when he was down there in Minnesota, they were getting in his ass. And he was getting real flustered. But stay in Bernie Sanders' ass. Him walking around with black folks, that ain't good enough. And when I'm talking about the don't vote campaign, where you should not vote for him or Hillary, black people should pull out and just vote independent or just vote locally. There are black people like, man, come on now. Bernie Sanders, man, he's the one for us. He's doing so many things for black folks. I said, name one thing. Name something. Name one thing he's going to do for black people. Every time we ask for something, which is basically reparations of resources, he shoots it down. He'll shoot it down, and he never offers another alternative to black folks. He will shoot it down, then start talking in these vague terms about whether well, it's poor white people too. That means he ain't gonna do shit, and that means you shouldn't vote for him. I'm not voting for Bernie Sanders. If he's not going to say what he's going to do for black people specifically, don't vote. That's the hashtag. Don't vote. I won't vote for him. I'll vote independent or I just sit this one out. Learn how to leverage your vote. And there's black people who want to argue me down. Bernie Sanders, I think he he did a, an appearance at Morehouse somewhere. There were, you know, a lot of black folks went to see him. They out there stepping and greeking and dancing and all that. It's like a big old plantation buck dancing fest. Cut that bullshit out and hammer his ass down on what he's going to do for black folks. I don't care about you hanging around civil rights Negroes. I don't care what you or who you hung with 60 years ago. How are you going to help black people who need the most help in the country right now? Because we're being slaughtered and terrorized and disenfranchised with this new Jim Crow system that's going on. What are you going to do for black folks, not poor folks, because all of us are not poor, but we still have to deal with white supremacy. See, watch these terms, man. Hammer this nigga down on terms. And stop letting him run these code words on you that don't mean nothing. When they say shit like, well, we're going to do a lot for minorities. Black people are like, oh, goody, yes. Minority don't mean nothing. White women are minorities, so when they say they're going to do something for minorities, they are going to do something for minorities, but not your dumb ass. Because black folks are still running around thinking minority means black, and it doesn't. That's why they use the term minority, so they can make you think they're doing something for you and then do something for themselves. What are they going to do for black people, melanoid people? And the sister wanted to argue me down on Twitter. I had to block her ass because a lot of people, black folks, you can't really logically give an answer as to what um, Bernie Sanders is going to do. So people just start trolling and being goofy. This sister was telling me, well, he he didn't say nothing specific, but his heart is in the right place. I said, sister, I'm going to have to block you. That's all I need to know. I ain't with all that heart in the right place shit. This sister told me Bernie Sanders' heart is in the right place. How? Just because he's hanging around a bunch of Negroes? Black folks got to stop being the cheap date. Just because people hang around you, you think that they're for you. He's hanging around you so that can give him credibility. He can see and show the world, look, I'm around all of these disenfranchised people. Now, I ain't going to do shit for them, but look, they like me. So you should like me too. 
and black folks go for the con game every time. If he's not going to do anything for you, don't vote for him. Don't waste your vote. Stop giving up the ass for free. We are the cheapest dates. People can come around us with all types of superficial nonsense and we go for it. My goodness. But I digress as far as that family. Now the thing is, you know what? With that OJ thing, it's another thing. That OJ show, it's no coincidence that they're showing it during Black History Month. That's not a coincidence that they're showing that in Black History Month. Again, the white supremacists are real slick. They do a lot of slick stuff during Black History Month. Y'all remember the last Black History Month, they had these stories about how George Zimmerman is going to do a celebrity boxing match and he'll fight anybody, including black people. And, you know, the, a lot of black folks got riled up by that. See, black folks, you got to start doing shit in code. You got to start knowing how they operate in code and you got to operate in code. And, you know, we still get that argument that why should black people have Black History Month? Y'all remember when they had Stacey Dash on Fox News talking about why we shouldn't have Black History Month and all that? And then you have a lot of white supremacists who go around saying, well, hey, you black guys, you guys got Black History Month. What if we had White History Month? You guys are getting mad if we had White History Month. And I've had some pushback for this new app that I'm putting together. Somebody emailed me, hey, man, why are you going to have an app that caters to black people? What if there's a, an app or website that catered to white people? I said, well, you got one. It's called Stormfront. Y'all got a whole bunch of sites and apps for white people. But the thing is, these sites and apps are about how to harm black people. You got Fox News. You got sites for that. So we need our own thing that we own and control. We're the ones who make Instagram hot. So we need our own joint that we own and control. But the thing is, when people talk about how there is a need for White History Month, you know what? I think there is a need for that. And I think there should be a White History Month celebration. And you know what we should do, family? For the month of March... Let's celebrate white history. I'm all for that. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking about even putting together a documentary celebrating white history. Let's talk about how George Washington owned many, many slaves and many of his slaves ran away because him and his wife were so brutal. We need to learn this history. Let's celebrate that all month. Let's put up some nice, good white history tidbits. I say let's celebrate it. Let's celebrate how Abraham Lincoln was really a white supremacist who thought that black people were inferior and really didn't want to free black people, but he knew that freeing slaves would hurt the southern states so they couldn't break off and empower themselves. Let's let's talk about white history. I'm all for it. For the month of March, every day, family, post up little memes and tidbits about real white history. Let's talk about how Christopher Columbus came over to America and gave all of the natives diseases and took the land and and got commemorated for that. Let's talk about white history. Let's talk about how the Europeans went over to countries like Tasmania and basically killed off every single one of the black people living there. Let's talk about it. Let's do a whole month where we talk specifically about white history. These white supremacists are right. We need to commemorate their history. We shouldn't leave them out. Let's talk about how the Europeans came over and gave syphilis to some of the native and indigenous people. Let's talk about how slave owners would rape black men in the Caribbean and in Brazil. They were raping so many black men in Brazil, there was an, a syphilis outbreak. So many black men were getting syphilis in the Brazil, they didn't know how they were getting it. They found out the Portuguese slave owners were raping them. Let's talk about white history. We need a, a whole month talking about white history. So they won't have no reason to complain. You feel me? 
Anyway, y'all, that's been today's episode of the Tarika Leap radio show calling or broadcasting live from Hawaii. Remember, the new app is called More Us. Go to moreus.com. The app will be finished soon. We're working on it. We're in production for the app. You guys, please contribute to the Indiegogo page. The link to the Indiegogo page is right there on the um, website at moreus, M-O-O-R-U-S. Dot com. In April, I'm going on the More Us tour to promote the app. I'm going to Miami, definitely. We already got Miami booked on the 23rd of April. I'll be in Houston on the 30th of April. We might be in Dallas on the 28th, that Thursday. We're, we're looking to book that. We're still trying to get a venue in New York. We're still trying to get a venue in D.C. All my New York and D.C. people, please contact me and let me know some venues that we could get in those areas that will hold my type of crowd because we are we're having a hard time getting the venues in D.C. and in New York. So y'all email me. I'm going to give y'all my personal email is um, info at TarikaLeet.com, family. Info at TarikaLeet.com. All right, I'm up out of here. I'm going to holler at you guys on Sunday's Ustream. Y'all have a good one, family. Peace. All right, family, we're back right here on the Tariq Elite Radio Show. I am your gracious host. My name is Mr. Tariq Elite Nasheed. And as I stated earlier, I am broadcasting live from Honolulu, Hawaii, Waikiki in particular, as you hear, there's sirens and stuff going on in the background. So you guys might hear some background noises. I'm sitting staring at the beach as we speak. I might let y'all get a little sound of the sea breeze going on, but it's I'm here. I'm doing the show a day late. I had some stuff to do. I was running around out here in Honolulu. The time difference is like two hours behind Los Angeles time, five hours behind East Coast time. So out here, it's hella early, but back in the States, it's hella late. So the time gets off a little bit, but I'm here. I'm here and I'm ready to chop it up and make it do what it do. Um, Don't forget, if you have not, books were put out on an independent um, publishing company. It was a publishing company out of Chicago that was independent and they put my books out. Well, they put The Art of Mackin out. And that sold a lot on a grassroots level. That My first book became very successful on a grassroots level. And again, corporate, they watch this stuff. They see what's going on. And a lot of the major publishers started putting out books with the Mac title in it there was a book that came out with one of the major publishers called mac tactics the art of attracting women so they used the word mac and they threw the word art in there so now when people search for art of mac and their books will come up so these people at corporate they're very slick at the way they do things and when something is successful that black people put together the white supremacists they know how to co-op the hell out of it And that tradition still goes on. Right now, as we know, everybody's talking about Hidden Colors coming out, Hidden Colors 4, and that's going to be out in a few months. People keep hitting me up about Hidden Colors 4. We're working on it, family. We're working hard on it. It's going to be out in a few months. I promise you. Now, everybody's buzzing about Hidden Colors. And it's Black History Month, by the way. So a lot of people are talking about Black History Month and Hidden Colors and all that good stuff. Do y'all know that Fox Films, they are about to put out a film about African-American women in space flight, um, black female astronauts, and some type of movie they're putting together now based on a book by this some people say that she's like a black feminist but you have to understand many of these black feminists are funded by the white supremacists these get hidden colors one two and three at hiddencolorsfilm.com ladies and gentlemen now speaking of hidden colors y'all know that you know hidden colors is the most successful 
black history documentary series ever. It has outsold all other history documentaries about black life, black culture, African culture, whatever you want to call it. And the Hidden Colors series, it, it was very successful. And let me not say was, it is very successful on a grassroots level. And it being so successful on a grassroots level, meaning we didn't have any mainstream support or mainstream help making this project a success. And when you have things like that, when you have grassroots projects doing the kind of numbers as hidden colors, you know, corporate America, they look at it. They see this. They watch this. Y'all remember a few years ago, there was a case, a situation I had with Nike. Nike put out a series of T-shirts called, I think it was called Hidden Images. See, they were using the word hidden now. They're using plays on the word hidden. They had hidden images. It was some type of LeBron James shirts from what I remember, but the shirts looked just like the Hidden Colors DVD cover. You guys can look this up, by the way. And, you know, there was some legal stuff we were going to look into. But, you know, they knew how to get around little legal loopholes and all that stuff. So corporate, they watch what you do. When I did my books, when I first did my books, like The Art of Mackin and all that, those